In this video, I want to talk to you about how to properly read nutrition labels. This is something that I've seen clients struggle with for years in the past and people that I've worked with when they're grocery shopping, they just, they can't seem to navigate the grocery store very well, especially when it comes to reading nutrition labels and understanding what they're buying. Let me clarify this. You should base how you're going to, whether you're going to buy a certain packaged food item or not, not off the front mark, the front cover label or the marketing on the front. You need to base it off the nutrition label. It doesn't matter if it says protein, it doesn't matter if it says lean, it doesn't matter if it says healthy, it doesn't matter if it says certified organic or non-GMO. It matters what is in the food, how was it made, and what does the label say. So check out the guide that I've given you on how to read nutrition labels because this will give you a better breakdown so you can see um, you know, in that guide. But let me use this for example. So I have a protein powder here. And you might think, well, it's a supplement, it's a protein powder, it's probably healthy. It depends, right? So when I'm reading through this nutrition label, what I'm looking for is if I'm gonna buy a packaged item, how processed is it? And even though maybe the marketing shows that it's healthy and whatnot, um, I wanna make sure that that's actually the case. So um, this particular supplement is a pretty good alternative to um, to a natural you know, protein source. Um, it is a plant-based protein powder, and I don't really have a lot of critiques on this specific powder other than the fact that it is still processed food, okay? So just because you're taking a supplement doesn't mean that it's all of a sudden healthy and that you should just be relying on this all the time. It's a supplement to your diet. So I always recommend that you eat whole food sources of, of any food, basically, prior to having packaged food items or supplements. That's always what I preface it with. But occasionally it's okay to have a processed food or a supplement um, if you have your diet in check. So as I'm reading down through here, I'm gonna see, okay, how big is the serving size? Okay, the serving size in terms of calories is 150 calories. I'm not really too concerned about calories. Don't get so fixated on calories because it's not about calories in, calories out. And you can check that uh, concept out in another video. But it's really about what are the quality of the nutrients I'm consuming or how much nutritional value is in those calories I'm eating. Because it may be beneficial for you to eat something that's more calories to get better nutrition than eat something that's less calories and not very nutritious at all. So I don't really care what the calories are that much. Um, total fat, three grams, conservative amount. Uh, there's zero trans fats. Trans fats are your only real bad fat. Okay, it's, it's the only food that I'm gonna say has zero nutritional value, or one of the very few ones. It has 0.5 grams of saturated fat. Saturated fat is actually good for you. You need about a third of your diet from saturated fats. If you want more information about fats, check out the video on fats that I did. Um, so that tells me that the, the other 2.5 grams of fat is going to be healthy poly and monounsaturated fat. So far, so good. Okay, then I'm gonna look at cholesterol. Cholesterol has also been debunked. Check out that same video on fats and cholesterol to see why cholesterol is actually healthy for you and is not unhealthy for you. The research on fats and cholesterol being bad has been completely debunked. So I don't mind if it has cholesterol, but this one actually doesn't. So no, no, uh, no issue there. Sodium, 320 milligrams. Okay, so if you're trying to you know, regulate your, your proper hydration and eat clean and eat well, once you get past that 300 milligram mark on sodium per serving, your sodium is gonna to start to add up throughout the day. So really I try to keep my sodium servings at about 300 milligrams or below if I can to keep my salt a little bit lower. Now, sodium isn't inherently evil either. You need sodium for proper muscle contractions and hydration and, and um, electrical signals being sent from your nervous system to the motor units of your muscles. So don't be scared by sodium, but do keep it in check. Um, total carbohydrates, 11 grams, four of which are fiber, which basically uh, makes it a, a slower absorbing on the blood sugar and um, only one gram of actual sugar. That's great. When I'm typically shopping for a, a processed food item, I want to find something that's a single digit sugar or zero um, because I want to keep my sugars as low as possible to make sure that I am um, eating quality carbohydrates. <clears throat> sugar, alcohol, zero, and protein, 21 grams. Um, I also get 10% of my daily value of vitamin K, calcium, uh, I'm sorry, 40% of vitamin K, 10% of vitamin A, 10% of calcium, 25% phosphorus, 4% um, manganese, 
uh, 10% vitamin C, 40% iron, 6% folate, and 8% magnesium. So not only does this give me macronutritional value, which is energy, proteins, carbs, and fats, but it does give me some micronutritional value. And that's what's more important. If you focus more so on getting your micronutritional value versus just fitting your macros, you're actually gonna have better results because your body doesn't just need energy to function. It needs specific key nutrients for normal metabolic functions. And you may be able to get enough calories throughout the day and even hit your protein, carb, and fat goals. But if you don't get your micronutrients, you're still going to put your body into a, a state of stress. So make sure that you're, get, you're also getting nutrient dense foods that have measures of vitamins and minerals as well. Now that we've gotten through the label, what I want to look at is the list of ingredients. So which is typically to the side of or below the nutrition facts label. Now, the rule with this is the first item listed on the ingredients list is what the food is predominantly made out of. So it's the, it's the largest portion. It's not necessarily 50% or more, it's just what the food is mostly made out of. So this is mostly made out of organic pea protein. And then everything listed after that is a little, of litter, little bit lesser value than what's predominantly in there. Organic pea starch, organic pea fiber, natural flavors, organic pumpkin seed protein, spinach powder, alfalfa grass, xanthagum, stevia extract, and I'm reading the list on and on. The way you know a food is processed is if it, the more items it has in its ingredient list means it's undergone more of a process. So when you're shopping for supplements and packaged foods, you wanna find something with the smallest list possible, and that will tell you that it's closer to its original whole food form. So as you can tell, I named about eight, nine, 10 things, and there's still a good number of ingredients left on this. So I know that this is highly processed. Of course it is, because it's a powder. This isn't what it looks like in nature. And that's what I would normally recommend that you do is eat foods that you normally find, um, how, that you eat in the form that they grow in nature. But this can be an okay supplement from time to time. Um, as I'm reading through this, this is where they'll get you. You may seem to have a, a healthy nutrition label, um, and you know, it's hitting your proteins, carbs, and fats, it's got good vitamins, the sodium's in, in control, you know, not too much sugar, but then you look at the ingredient list. There are over 40 names for sugar that you won't recognize on ingredient labels, and check out the guide for more information on that. So the ingredient list is where they're gonna hide a lot of these less healthy food items or, or ingredient sources behind really scientifically sounding names like um, maltodextrin um, or, you know, like xanthagum or d different things like this, sucralose, those kinds of things. You're not really gonna know what's in your food because it's got all this weird verbiage. So that's why I say try to get something that has the least amount of items listed on the label as possible. That way you know it's undergone at least a minimal amount of processing or it's closer to its organic form in na or its natural form in nature. Um, and those are some tips on how to read nutrition labels. Just know, excuse me, just know that there are still some good packaged foods um, or slightly processed foods that are not you know, inherently evil or really negative foods for you to be eating that you can have on a conservative basis from time to time in your diet that won't detract you from your goals. However, if you're eating out of packages and bottles and, and um, bags and cans very regularly, you need to really reevaluate your diet. The majority of your food should be coming from the perimeter of the store. Uh, for more information on proper grocery shopping tips, check out the grocery shopping tips video and um, we'll talk to you soon.